What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Kenny back again with another Conversations with Kenny. I have two special guests that I'm going to be introducing here to you guys in a minute, but we need to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Obviously, that this episode is sponsored by Ringside Collective, who's the number one uh, website for all your action figure needs. Use the code word, the call up to save 10%. And we are getting into the holiday season. So you know what that means. That means that the Fig Cave Holiday Toy Drive is in full gear. Let's get all the kids together and give them an amazing Christmas. So now what can you do to give these guys an amazing Christmas is by donating an unopened toy. It doesn't have to be wrestling related. It could be any type of toy that you want. Let's donate it. Let's head up on over to the Fig Cave instagram to get more information on where to ship it um with that being said now i can introduce my two guests you will probably know these guys from um fightful uh they have a show called um coexisting i have maggie and rob i'm gonna bring them in right now let's got i got rob in the house and then i got maggie right both of you guys are here what's going on guys how are you Doing great. Uh, we're, we're so great. I'm sorry for cutting you off, Rob. We've never been on a <laughs> podcast together as guests, so this is probably really gonna be, it's gonna be weird. It's either Rob or it's or uh -huh. it's either me. So it's uh, uh so I'm gonna hop off uh like in a minute, but like okay. uh, I'm always here to support uh Rob whenever I can. We just finished recording one of our mm -hmm. episodes of uh, of After Dark for Fight mm -hmm. Select. So I was like. As long as I'm here, I can, mm -hmm. you know, I can hop on. So, yeah. so, because I know you need to hop off really quickly, I'm I'm gonna just kick it off with Maggie really quick and just say like, how did you guys come together to um, come up with this show? This is actually weird because we're approaching the one year mark since uh, mm. Rob and I got together for for our show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that after uh, we were on a watch along for a fightful on okay. fightful Twitch. We were, we were on all these watch alongs uh, that Joel Pearl uh, put together, but it was SummerSlam and Joel Pearl wasn't there. So Rob was leading the watch along and I was nice. there. Yeah. And uh, like we both saw that like we kind of work well with each other, like we'd, we, we fit. Mm -hmm. And then after like uh, some, some weeks later, Rob just DM'd me and said, I know this is a long shot, but you know, can you... <laughs> Are you interested in ever doing the like a, a podcast for like wrestling or whatever? And I was like, I'm not ready, but ask me again. Like it's, I oh really need to be. It really, I really needed to be in the right mindset uh, for that. It, it was almost like Rob was asking you for, for like your hand in marriage, and he was like, uh, <laughs> I, "I don't, I don't, I don't know right now." It kind of reminds me of what the first time I asked my wife to marry me, she was just like, "Yeah, but can I think about it really quick?" And that, that just, oh, oh that's was like, not great. But <laughs> <laughs> you, and yeah, it was just like that. But she was just messing with me though. She just wanted to see what I was gonna do, but she did say yes though. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, is, that is better. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I was, I, I was just asking him to, to you know, to give me time so I can uh, get my wrap my head around like the mm -hmm. whole situation because I've like no one's ever asked me to be to to do a podcast with them before like ever, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he kept asking and I, I I don't I don't know Rob was it the third or the fourth time you asked. Well, I, I know I checked like a couple of weeks, like about a month or two later. And I'm like, hey, just. Uh, I think it was the in. third time. I think it was okay. the third time that you asked. And it yeah. was December. And um, December, because I'm a bartender. And December mm -hmm. is like the holy grail for bartenders. Oh, yeah. It's, it's around the holidays. Everyone, it's like everyone takes time off. And they mm. take time off so they can fucking drink themselves to death. I'm sorry mm -hmm. for cursing. No, you can curse like, all you want. It's okay. Oh yes, thank, thank you. That's great. <laughs> so uh, they can they, they have time off so they can get wasted all the time. I, I don't know. I think it's the summer. It's uh, the holiday spirit or whatever. Mm -hmm. At least it's like that in Bulgaria. I don't know how it is for you guys in the. In the states no it's like that here in new york too it's like that oh yeah okay yeah, oh mm -hmm. i know about new york and there you go exactly oh, no. okay so uh 
so it's uh it's it's gonna be uh it's every december is is like mm-hmm. that so when december came i was like yeah okay let's do it because in my mind i was like if i can do this in december i can mm-hmm. do this all the time right like if, if i can get my shit together and and be able to work like coherently <laughs> mm-hmm. and like have have a nice podcast and actually keep in uh like keep in line with wrestling mm-hmm. but, like every day like I can do this all the time, and I actually did it. Uh, barely, <laughs> but I did it, and I think that it was like the the third or the fourth podcast I missed because I was fucking sick, and Drew Nicholas had to fill in. Uh, but yeah, it was it's it's a it's a really nice story. I I love telling that story because like it's it tells uh it tells you like the patience Rob had and the fact mm-hmm. that he he didn't look for another like uh, uh, co-host like that's he wanted right. me. So that's so that's really uh, flattering and thank you Rob. To, oh, I I could you, never you. get tired of thanking you by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that was that was the thing. So it was it was worth it cuz I had a I just knew that this was the person like I wanted mm-hmm. um, I wanted to do something different because there's there's all like it, there's so many like just get, like two guys doing podcasts two mm-hmm. guys there weren't many like men and women that were doing podcasts and I was I was like this is what I want Fifle doesn't have that other than like the um, the post shows so right. I wanted to do something different and it worked Sean um, Sean loved the idea, and uh, Sean Ross F, that is, and uh, here we are, and it's been great. I mean, that, that's great, because I, I do catch the show on, on Fridays. Uh, sometimes I try to catch it live, but uh, being a busy parent half the time, it, it, it does take up the, the, yeah. the time, but I do catch the, the, the replays of it, and that's why I wanted to get you guys on just to you know get to get, get to know you guys a little bit more find out you know what bring you guys together so that was a really interesting uh story of how you guys came together you know and have this this show and then now I know why this the show is coexisting you know because you guys yeah. are trying to coexist together yeah. from we, different time from zones different, from, yeah, yeah, and different especially time. from different time zones because I know it could be a, a lot harder for you Maggie as far as it's just you know, getting to uh, to do these recordings, you know, for, for the show? Well, we, uh, like, we started off as a recorded show on Select. Uh-huh. Okay. But then but then we got moved to Overbooked, which was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, uh, and then Rob said, well, this gives us an opportunity to do it live. And I was like, what do you mean live? I cannot, I can't do this live. Are you kidding? Like, I'll <laughs> fuck up everything. And he was like, you're great. You're going to do it. it it's like on the watch alongs and mm-hmm. i was i was so uh, incredibly like not ready for that but like after after the first show i was like i think i'm good <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's okay and uh now i was like i i i, I would never want to go back to recordings because mm-hmm. when we're live we get to interact with the people in the chat which is something we don't get to do when we're recorded and right. they actually yeah so the conversation uh, goes differently when it's uh, when it's a live show so uh, also we have a really really nice uh, like people like always support our show right. and they're most of them are smart asses, but like we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, I get that a lot too. I do, uh, I know I do a you live do. stream, I, I do know. a live stream on Mondays. So we have like our core, like group mm-hmm. of people that's always there every Monday. They're really lively in the chat. So I definitely understand. Yeah, it, it makes the show go by a lot quicker. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So one of the things that I wanted to, you know, to pick you guys' brains about is just, you know, when a lot of wrestling fans think of Fightful, they always think of like Sean. Um, like, what is like the hardest part for you guys? <laughs> she makes the face, <laughs> but it's true because, like, when you think of Fightful, you think of Sean, and then oh, you men. it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, for like in a female's perspective, it's like, like, what is the hardest part for you guys, especially like in this type of business that we love to watch all the time, they always say like, Oh, well, you know, you're a female. What, what do you know? And, you know, quite honestly, there's a lot of females out there 
that have proven themselves to be like, hey, I know more than the average freaking guy that tries to cover wrestling on a daily basis. Oh, I'm sure I don't. But like, <laughs> this doesn't mean that I I don't have like perspective, like different perspectives mm-hmm. and like uh, opinions and like valid reasons for having uh, like this point of view. It's mm-hmm. like it's not it's not something that is gender bias. It's right. like different people, different views. It's not like because like I have a different parts that you need to you know that is how i view it but like i know that there are different people in the world which think differently especially coming from a person in bulgaria this is a huge problem for us because it's uh it's not that great for women here and uh it's mm, i don't get that a lot in on twitter and our on our show, never on our show. Like we've mm-hmm. never, we've never had these kinds of uh, interactions with us. Uh, but like, I see more and more of the better part of the world on Twitter. I know this is weird for you guys, I'm surprised, but it, yeah. yeah, it's 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 surprising because like it's something we've talked to um, to a lot of guests on our show. It's it's. All in the Twitter algor- algorithm. algorithm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all in in that. And I'm trying to like I'm I'm so proud of Rob for for doing what he's doing because when you focus on the negative comments and tweets on Twitter, Twitter will give you more negative and awful things because it's the algorithm. Yeah, like this this is the, that, and because I never do that. I don't see the awful things that people see on Twitter. I'm I'm genuinely surprised when they're like, "I need a break from this place." No, uh-huh. I, don't, <laughs> I, I think that's why I really I barely go on Twitter. So that's how, like you know, somebody sends me a message and like I'll be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." Like I literally just cut like Twitter from like sending me notifications. So like if I, I oh let me check it today, I'm like oh more negative stuff. Okay, let me just check my inbox. All right, nothing there. All right, I'm gonna log off now. <laughs> I know, but like Twitter is a place which, uh, in through which I interact with people who are amazing and lovely, and like I, I almost most of the time cannot stand my in real life friends. So this is a really nice, <laughs> really nice way of like having a better time. So there. And Rob, how was your experience with everything? We um, will circle back like Fightful, and then. We're gonna she she Maggie bring up a good point with Twitter, so then we'll point all that going in. Yeah, you know, like Maggie said, I like I, that algorithm thing. I didn't really even know about that, and I had mm-hmm. a lot of uh, a lot of like things here and there, and uh, you get messages, and I mean, there, there's things like I didn't even know until I and I should have looked into this before, but mm-hmm. I didn't even know you could turn your messages off for non followers so yes i was getting i was getting messages from followers that were just saying just the most weirdest and awful things to me and Mm -hmm. um it was just brutal like it it, and it would get me down because these people didn't even know me and uh it was because i was guilty of association i've had people block Mm -hmm. me because of the name in my account Um, i put robert feifel in it you know that that was a thing. It, it bothered me for a while, and mm. um, but then it's like one of those things. That's the person's right. If that's what they want, more power to them. I know I didn't say anything to them that would get them to want to block me, and mm-hmm. um, I just stopped with the negative negativity for the most part. <laughs> I said for the most part because there's sometimes that I just. Uh, I know it's it's yeah. sometimes it's get yeah. the, get the I, but, I know. Yeah. I yeah. I took I I took a break for a while because I was doing like interviews in the beginning, um and like you know like reaching out to talent and stuff like that. And there were times that like you know you read like these comments and just like you know Rob said it it does get to you. You know what I mean? I remember having conversations with Rob about that, just like oh you know shouldn't and you know let it get to you and stuff like that. And I've actually even spoken to Sean about this too, and be like he'll be like you just got to keep going. And then I was like I need a break. And yeah. I t- literally took a break for like six months, and I was like, I- "I'm the- oh god, <laughs> yeah, yeah." And that's the thing. I've like that was part of it too. Where uh, 
I love the man, but I was defending him way too much, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sean. And, uh, he gets he, he gets it bad, and um, mm-hmm. there's just it came to the point where uh, I just can't do it for mm-hmm. for for many reasons, and uh, right. it was it was one of those things where it just I had to let it go, and it's done wonders for me. So yeah, exactly. yeah, I've I've learned to just like ignore it because everybody just says oh just just ignore it you know I mean? yeah. and yeah it's you, not that you, easy no it's not but it, the, you know what's the power of that block button though i'll block you real quickly <laughs> like all right if you want to make another account to talk shit by all means do so but guess what i'm gonna block that too yeah it's uh it's this is self-care kenny yeah it's, exactly uh, yeah mm-hmm. so what what got you guys into wrestling in the first place? The Rock. I'm I'm just gonna say it. I'm a simple woman. The Rock. Uh-huh. He, he was he's so hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> you sound like my mom. My mom is the same way. She's like, I love The Rock. I don't care what he does. I do not care. I was a simple eleven year old kid, uh-huh. and I saw The Rock, and I was like, okay, what is this? <laughs> like. And then my parents started trashing wrestling. And I was like, uh-huh. how do you know what this is? Mm-hmm. How do you know? Like, yeah. why? Because it was something new for Bulgaria. Uh-huh. And it became, and, and it started showing, uh, it started being on a, uh, on a channel, which was new. Like we have, we had two channels back then. Mm-hmm. Only two. Okay. <laughs> Two channels, and then one of them got bought by uh, this big ass dude, uh, mm-hmm. a billionaire or some sort, and then he brought back this channel, which showed wrestling for the first time in Bulgaria ever. Like we didn't have it, like back in '99. Oh, I was ten. Okay, I was ten years old, and they started explaining to me what this is and why it's stupid, and I was like, "But how?" How do you know what this is? How do you what? Mm-hmm. And then when I think about it, I think that they actually saw movies with Hulk Hogan. Okay. Probably. Probably. And uh, because they know knew who Hulk Hogan was. I had mm-hmm. no idea who he was because like he was in WCW and I could never watch WCW back then because they didn't show it on television. Mm. They only showed WWF only that and i had no idea because i didn't have a computer so Mm -hmm. i can watch different stuff and this is actually how uh the rock's the greatest i actually stopped watching wrestling for a long long time really long time um but then i heard that the rock came back and he was fighting john cena at wrestlemania for the title Uh and then i I, then, you, then you got hooked back into this crazy right, world that we call pro wrestling. Right back in. So The Rock got me into wrestling, and uh-huh. The Rock was the one who pulled me back in. So how, how do you circle. not love the guy? Full circle, yeah. <laughs> and Rob, what got you into wrestling? Just a quick uh, oh, ahead, quick note. Ahead. I have to get the no, fuck that's out. Fine. Yeah, yeah, no, no, do so, your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I hope you have a lovely stream. I have you no too. idea how to get out. Oh, leave. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I could just kick you out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> no problem, Megan. Thank you so much for, for dropping in. Thank you. Bye, Rob. Bye. Bye. Good night. Yeah, she's awesome. I love doing a show with Maggie. Yes. It's great. Uh, but how I got into wrestling, and I remember the moment it happened. I was uh, at one of my mom's my mom's best friend's house, and it was mm-hmm. a Monday night. It wasn't Raw. It was back when they, uh, I think it was, it might, sorry, it might not have been Monday night. It might have been, it, it doesn't matter. It was at night. And I mm-hmm. see this man just, I've never seen a guy like this on TV before. He was just absolutely huge. His name was Andre the Giant. Mm. he was standing right beside Bobby the Brain Heenan and I was just like enamored uh, right. with him I was just like what in the world is this and I could not get my eyes off the TV and uh, I just started loving it like every it seemed like every Saturday morning or late Saturday afternoon I would make sure I was in front of my TV 
um, watching. And uh, next thing you know, I'm <laughs> saying my prayers, taking my vitamins. Um, you know, it's I absolutely loved it. I was I and I was a weird kid, man. Towards the like when I got older, well, like and I'm talking like when I was like in the second grade a little bit, and mm-hmm. I would uh, I always rooted for the heels, except for, like I liked Hogan, but I always rooted for like uh, Ted DiBiase. I liked uh, okay, I liked I liked guys like that. I, it was Roddy Piper. I thought was great. I, it was weird, um, but uh, yeah, that's what did it. Just uh, early. Uh, to mid '80s, WWF got me in there, and uh, I watch all my life. I've watched. There was, except one year that I, um, I pretty much took a break, but I still watched mm-hmm. the four major, or at that time, the four major pay per views. I watched. I always watched Royal Rumble. I always watched mm-hmm. WrestleMania, Survivor Series, SummerSlam. So I've always, it's always been a part of me. It's, um. Some people have their like. Some people love the NBA. They can watch any NBA game. They can watch, and which is perfect. That's fine. That's how I feel about wrestling. Like I can right. watch any wrestling, maybe even if it, even if it sucks. Like after a while, it's like a, that was a worth it, a waste of time. Like, I mean, I'll still watch. Example like NWA is going through a hell of a hard time right now, but I'll still watch mm-hmm. because I love yeah. wrestling. And. Um, that's just the way I feel like pro wrestling is my, my sport. I still love other sports like football and baseball, but mm-hmm. pro wrestling is my thing. And it always has been. And I don't it, think that'll change. And I just love it. There was something about that night. I just saw Andre the giant and I was just like, Whoa. And, uh, that, that that's the easiest thing I can say or the best way I can say it. Pretty much just like your outlet to like, just get away from everything and just, yeah. Pretty much have that maybe three to two hour span of just not worry about anything, just watching, uh, you know, professional wrestling and, and enjoying the product. Um, but being that you do more of the like coverage and and writing, uh, do you view wrestling a little bit differently? Well, you know, the thing is, is um, the coverage I've cut way back on um, mm-hmm. uh, because it's just we have other people now to do it and Mm -hmm. um, I still help out, but I help out more behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've always been one of those people that I'm awful. I would be, I always tell people I'd be the worst movie critic because I like, I find the good in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as like even wrestling, um, I don't rip like wrestlers like at Mm -hmm. all. Like I never, like I'll rip them on, even on Twitter, I don't rip them. Like I don't, like, right. I don't put the at symbol. I mean, they there's some wrestlers that just say the stupidest things, but I still don't, I don't go and tag them and wrestle. But right. but you at um, least have your opinion. Yeah, I have my opinion, and um, it's one of those things where I I look at everything from the business standpoint more than anything because mm-hmm. I'm I'm more intrigued. Like, and that's one thing I don't like about going to. Um, raw tv tapings or smackdown mm-hmm. or even aw dynamite i don't pay attention to the match as much i'm watching the production which drives me absolutely nuts that i do that because <laughs> i'm not i'm it's crazy but um yeah it's it's I, it's really hard to explain but it's it's um it's as far as like just being i try to be positive more than anything right. like it's i try to find the good um like I'll give you one one example, and this is the way I I tell people: a lot of people cannot stand Baron Corbin. I think Baron Corbin is great because he's doing his job. Mm-hmm. His job is to have that change. I call it change the channel heat, where you yeah. just don't want to see him because he's that heel that just drives you nuts. He's doing his job, which means he's doing an excellent job. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that they put him with JBL now, that's even like making it harder like for right. a lot of people but i think it's i think it's good i mean yeah, I, know, I definitely think that was a good move for them too yeah absolutely and it's it's one of those things where he is he's a powerful character because mm-hmm. people do not want to like him um and that means he he does his job like that was the same thing about seamus a few years ago when it just felt like and this guy, like, just always, like, he's just always, like, getting these title shots here and there. Not not on pay-per-view, but, like, on a Raw. Mm-hmm. 
Well, the reason why is because he's a trusted, trusted veteran, yep. you know, like that's, that's the thing. If you are a trust, trusted veteran, you're going to get these opportunities to, to be on there because you're trusted. That's why we see our truth occasionally, or well, now we won't see him for a while because he's hurt. Yeah. But our truth was a guy that Vince McMahon absolutely loved when he was there and trusted him. Um, there are certain wrestlers that Vince McMahon trusts. There are going to be certain wrestlers Triple H trust. Tony Khan's the same way. There's certain wrestlers that you're going to see more than than others because they can get the job done. And um, th- th- and that's the thing. Like I I I try to find the good in every wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some times where it's just it, it goes back to pretty much the way I was raised. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. You exactly. Know, I was, you know, what I was, I was raised the same way. So yeah. And my like, I don't, I don't like even when I do like a, an occasional fightful review, like mm-hmm. live. I, I don't do them often, but even then, I don't find the negative. I'll question the booking. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I'll question the booking. I mean. Everybody's been talking about this past weekend at Crown Jewel about Austin Theory. Yes. Um, I I found the negative in it, and I also find the positive. I think the positive is um, you. There's there's two ways to do it. You can. I I honestly think the one way they could do it is build him up to be a face. Mm-hmm. Like people feel bad for him right now a little bit because of them taking that briefcase. Right. Make people feel bad for him. Let him just work his way up. You have a you have a shot to make this guy a big face, and he's one of those guys that they honestly thought could be a face of the company at one time. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but mm-hmm. if you're going to give him that shot, you got to give him that shot. So I look at the positive, you know, and then the negative was why'd you put it on him in the first place? The same thing mm-hmm. with Otis when they gave him the money in the bank. That was just dumb as it could be. So yeah, I don't um, I don't think they really thought it out too too no. too much on that one because I think they had a plan in place. Is like. For me, I always felt like Cody was supposed to be the one to win Money in the Bank, and then yeah. he got hurt, so they had to like do an audible, and they're like, "Okay, who are we gonna put it on?" And I was like, "Oh, we can just put it on Theory, because that's yeah. who Vince McMahon was really highly of, you know." Yep. And then now yeah. Vince leaves. They're like, "Well, you know, what do we do with him now? We can continue pushing him to be a, a, a heel." Obviously, he did a good job because a lot of people were like happy that he cashed in the the money in the bank and lost i was a little confused for the simple fact that you you know you do a cash in on an open challenge you know yeah, why would you do it for the u.s title yeah exactly out of all things yeah, exactly and and you know the the one thing going back to this week i to give you another good point is nikki uh cross when she yes. got the 24 7 title she was mm-hmm. walking by the trash can and they made it appear that she threw the belt in the trash can but they she didn't the belt, the title fell right before, like she made it mm-hmm. look like it, but if you weren't paying attention, the title did not go in the trash. And the reason yeah. they did that is because even though they made it look disrespectful, right? They did, they did not do it. They did it in the most respectful way they could because they had, they know they've had wrestlers that have held that belt. And by throwing it in the trash, you're saying that doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. They did it that way. So that's telling them in a way that, Hey, this belt's not trash. We yeah. appreciate it. We're just moving on. And also, and technically, people, yeah, Sorry, go ahead. yeah. Some people don't look at it that way, and mm-hmm. I, I, I do. I look at it from, I get it. Like if they right. would have thrown in the trash, I would have just ripped the hell out of them for it. I'm actually yeah. the same people that thought it was the dumbest title ever are the ones complaining about it going out the way it did. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm fine with it. I, I know Dana Brooks been critical about it, yep. but. Yeah, you know, and I, I said the, I said the same thing because I was just like people was like, oh well, she threw it in the trash. Well, technically she didn't because it's, she she had it on her shoulder, it slipped out of her shoulder and hit the floor. If you look yeah. at it, you know, and it's like if if, if she would have picked it up and grabbed it and threw it in the trash, and I'm like, okay, you know, then we have to we have to talk about something. But I'm hoping that what WWE does with this opportunity is that when our truth does come back. They do some type of segment where he's sitting You're there looking for it. <laughs> and he's kind of looking for it and he's just like going through little trash cans trying to find it and stuff like that. You know, it'll make good TV. I'm yeah. always about good TV, you know, because yeah. uh, WWE is more entertainment than anything else. I think everybody would get a kick out of it. Um, well, we'll wrap up with this. Um, there's so many people that, that come to me 
you know, because I've, I've been doing like, you know, podcasting for a while now and they'll say like, you know, how do you, what are some tips of getting into this type of business? Uh, I say I got really lucky when I started doing interviews because I just reached out to like as many people as possible and whoever showed up, showed up and whoever didn't, it was just like, okay, you know, I've had my ups, I've had my downs. So I ask you this, uh, what are some piece of advice that you can give someone who uh, wants to say work for a company like Fightful or, you know, and wants to pursue um, like wrestling, just media in general. I'm not going to say wrestling because every, you know, with this, with this particular show, people love, you know, football and basketball and, you know, and other walks of life. So just media in general. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. What I would always say, and this is advice that, um, Sean, Sean Ross Sapp did not give me this sort of advice. I just heard him give this advice on a show once. He, he will never ask anybody to work for free. Mm -hmm. um, however, you have to get your content. You have to make content and you have right. to get it out there. So um, to get that content out there, if you need to, if you build your own uh, YouTube or if you build your own blog, you got to get it out there. If you want to write a column, mm -hmm. you find a website. Um, even if it's even if the website gets twenty five viewers, at least try to get on that website. Write one column a month. Mm -hmm. Build up, build up. Just create content because eventually, either somebody's going to see you, or somebody's going to see it on your resume, and they're going to give you a shot. Um, the and that's one thing that I did. I. I with Fightful, um, I started as a just a fan of Fightful because I used to yeah. do this way back in the day. I went from 1997 to early 2000. I was in wrestling media, but I was more of a like an aggregator. I was kind of right. taking what you see now, like Dave Meltzer or Bob Ryder mm -hmm. at that time and Wade Keller. I would take their stories, aggregate it on different sites. And then after a while, it's like, I'm not going to make any money doing this. I only broke one story and it wasn't even that great of a story. So <laughs> um, I just, I left it because it was like time to go to college. And um, right. so I left and then I came back, got into wrestling more. And then I just watched what Fightful was doing. And I'm like, I love this site. They were really into, they were, they were into MMA and, and at the time in wrestling. Right now we're not into MMA as much, right. but I really liked it and, um, I just liked the whole, this, the whole system they had up and I liked the podcast that they did. And I volunteered, um, uh, because I had social media experience. I volunteered to do, uh, moderating. And from mm -hmm. there I went to, uh, I did moderating. And then I asked to, if I could do a, an article called, uh, my first article was selling the merch. And what I did was I just did a column on merchandise, a new merchandise that was selling or the numbers like what was popular uh and that did well and then i uh started writing uh i started doing coverage for fightful and i pretty much just did whatever i could like mm -hmm. if they needed something so now i'm like a backup i'm not full-time but i'm i'm always available for them um, mm -hmm. so because of, i'm blessed at where where i'm at in life with what i can do and my my free time so um, so I'm, I'm available pretty much whenever they need me, uh, for the most part. So I'm just like a very, I'm a, I'm a backup. I'm the, uh, I'm, I'm not the starter, but I can be there when they need me. So it's, it's very nice. And the thing is, is I, I know that's a long winded question, but the mm -hmm. thing is make content, create content, even if it's just everything. Like if it's, if it's about football today and if it's about the new Marvel movie tomorrow, Mm -hmm. And then it's wrestling on Wednesday, and then you're talking about the new Lifetime movie tomorrow, the next mm -hmm. week, whatever it is, make that content, and you eventually, if you continue, it'll work. Now, the one thing I will always tell you is, you will not make you will the chances of you hitting success right away are right. slim to none. I mean, it it just doesn't happen. But if you continue and just continue you're gonna find people it just happens it, it mm -hmm. does and uh we went from maggie and i our first fightful select show we did 15 viewers 15 right. um 
I think our largest was the day that Vince McMahon, um, the news about Vince McMahon came out, the Wall Street Journal report. We hit right. our biggest, our biggest show was over 4,000. Um, wow. That was the biggest we, we've ever done. And it was just, it was crazy like that that happened and to us like uh, it, it was it just it was nuts and um it, it's just if you continue to create content good things will end up happening um even if you just take a break um that's that's fine but just try to like have content ready like for like so you can schedule it out Mm-hmm. That that's one thing I do. I do retro reviews on Fightful Select. I have some like saved up. That way, if you know, something comes up where I can't do something this week, I you have one ready. That in. Yeah, right. it's it's good. I just try to make. Uh, I just try to have like stuff ready to go, and it's it's been worth it. I I do whatever I can to help out I, because I believe in Fightful. I love everything I get to do for the website and. I wouldn't want it any other way. That's great. I mean, and, and that's so true because, you know, um, when, like, even like when I said before, like when I, when I started doing this, I was doing it by myself. I was trying to get interviews with different talent. And then I ended up meeting my co-host, um, Toad, that we do uh, live streams on Mondays. And I've been doing it ever since. And then I just decided to start bringing back the conversations with Kenny segments and, you know, getting getting myself back out there because you know everyone needed that break um, from this from this business. And I, I, for me, I don't really think I don't I don't look for it to uh, skyrocket, but I do use this as like a a, a mental health type of thing for myself. You yeah. know, because I get to talk to you, I get to talk to like other um, wrestling fans. We get our opinions out there. And obviously I know my wife doesn't want to hear about wrestling 24 seven. So it's great that I can sit there and have these conversations with you guys and say like, Hey, um, this is what I like. This is what my opinion is for like this particular segment or this show, you know what I mean? And we, and it's always great to have that discussion, but, yeah. um, but Rob, thank you so much for you and Maggie for, uh, for stopping in, for you know for this segment and getting to talk to you obviously we'll talk a lot more like you know like off air and stuff like that but i'm so glad that we finally got to have this opportunity to um to talk and get to know exactly how you guys came together you know in in your show it was it was a great um story that that i got to hear um is there anything that you want to plug in right now before we start wrapping up here yeah, you can follow me at Rob Wilkins on Twitter. I do have a Fightful, uh, or I am on Instagram. You can follow me mm-hmm. at at Fightful Rob. Well, what is it? At Fightful Rob. Yeah, I think it's Fightful Rob. I'm so sorry. You would think I'd remember this. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, otherwise, every Friday at 3 o'clock, Maggie and I do coexisting on Fightful Overbooked. Um, it's a fun show. We go an hour and a half, and then we move over to Fightful Select. And we do a show that's very similar to you, uh, to yours. We just ask different questions to different mm-hmm. guests. Uh, depending, uh, this week we have uh, Chopper Pete from Wrestle Talk on. Okay. Uh, next week we're having um, somebody that's uh, a health, uh, fitness, uh, inst- like instructor type. Uh, okay. Which we're Ooh. looking forward to, and we have different people scheduled out, and it's, it's just a blast, and um, I love it. And the one thing I want to say to you is thank you for having me and i uh appreciate you being a mental health advocate because i am as well and that's mm-hmm. very important so definitely um it's one of those things i always will try to uh, try to push so mm-hmm. um if you need help there's help out there to mm-hmm. anybody so i just want to say thank you for for bringing that up and uh thanks again for having me i, I know i give long-winded questions and that's why oh, i don't get asked I don't get asked on podcast much anymore <laughs> <laughs> i'm the you know and i've nothing i'm the same way and i've learned to just like uh, sometimes bring it down a little bit, but I, I, it's a, it's a work in progress for both of us. Trust me. Yeah. Yep. That's true. <laughs> so thank you. No problem. So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, um, at the top of the show, we are gearing up for the holiday season and you know, that giving back is, uh, something that I hold near and dear to my heart. So, uh, definitely check out the, the Instagram and TikToks for all the information when it comes to the fig cave, uh, toy drive. I want to give a special thanks to Rob and Maggie for coming on the show. 
Also giving a special thanks to the guys over at the Fake Cave. You can catch their shows every single Thursday. Uh, the Run-In Podcast, which you can catch their shows on Fridays. The Dirty Heels Podcast. Um, Henny Wrestling. GG for the win. Uh, the Knuckleheads Network that helps me uh, generate these podcasts on a daily basis. Um, Circle Debate. Fightful for always giving us great information when we don't know exactly what the hell is going on. <laughs> Um, and to everyone else pursuing their dreams, don't let anybody um, stop you. Remember that you are the director, you are the star, and you are the writer of your own path and journey. So continue to push and strive for bigger and better things. Guys, until next time, I will be talking to you. <laughs>